Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Heat Seeker Outdoors. This week we're going to do a little trapping using our uh, Hags trapping products. And then we're going to talk about the uh, finished product on our beaver. And we're going to show you how to make beaver tail oil. Uh, it's going to be a good episode. Hope you enjoy. Well, we're running traps on the way to work this morning. And uh, got a muskrat here in the... 110 here on this little crossover uh, the water kind of necks down right here and it's kind of gone water's dropped a little bit there was water right there in that little slide that he's in but uh, pretty happy we got a muskrat this morning with our hags uh, spring clip on a 110 and gonna get him taken care of and go ahead and get into the station. Hey everybody, we're uh, probably all likelihood, this is our last catch of the year. Uh, coon season goes out tomorrow. And we've got a lot of our traps pulled, uh, most of the traps pulled. So probably the last catch of the year and what better way for us to go out than using the Hags uh, Spring Clip 220, nice large coon. Uh, looked like I caught him coming out of this picked corn uh, trying to cross there's a den tree right here behind me and uh, he probably came out of this little uh, watery area over here um, we just used the 3 8 rod on these I forgot my wood dowels so we use the 3 8 rod and it just does an awesome job stabilizing these traps big thanks to J3 Outdoors Jeff Haggerty's one of the uh, best guys I know, especially in the trapping industry. Uh, everything's American-made, and I can't recommend him enough. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one pulled and go in, uh, get home, and dry out a little bit. We're here at a pond. The guy had us come check. Uh, got a few rats in it. Actually, when we come up to look at the pond, we've seen the rat going into the hole, uh, the muskrat. Uh, using hacks brackets and 3 8 inch rods, uh, we come up and set a couple sets real quick. And uh, we just got done setting a couple more on the other side and come back, and we've already got a rat in the hole. So we're going to get him out, and uh, we'll show you how these hacks brackets work. Get that ice already floated over and jammed up my trap. I know. That's why I was worried about on the other side. Man, I should have been deep. Hags brackets on a pull. They work every time. We're a big rat. Yeah. Let me get him out. So I'll stick it right back in there before I lose it real quick. Those are, that's just so easy to set. Oh, yeah. I wish I'd have had those as a kid when there was a lot of rats. Yeah. Yeah, these hex brackets on this 3 8 rod, it just makes it, I mean, slide it down and just, this would be hard to shove a stick in and hold it and I mean, you're gonna get wet. With this one though, it makes it just find your den. Make sure you slide down to your, you're hitting. And then you're done, it's reset rat in the bag and the problem here in Indiana we don't have a lot of rats anymore I don't know what ever happened to all of them but we just don't have the numbers we used to I talked to some guys uh, at Hoosier Trapper from Kentucky and they were catching 150 200 rats a year we're lucky to catch 30 rats a year I'm getting ready to go over that but <clears throat> don't, don't kick the trap oh I wasn't near a trap well, one of our uh, hags spring clips on a 110. We caught a mink this morning. Uh, it's kind of a smaller mink. Um, you know, looks like a probably a small male. Um, pretty easy to set. Pretty easy to change. Um, and the three eighths rod with the hag spring clip on the 110 did the job this morning hey everybody we're here it's uh, the end of our mink season 
in Indiana, and we've got a nice one here uh, with our 3 8 rod and the uh, Hag spring clip for the 110. Uh, it looks like a really nice uh, mink. Caught him uh, perfectly right behind the neck, uh, right behind the head on the neck there in our 110. Can't say enough about uh, J3 Outdoors, the Hag Spring Clip. Uh, we had this little run coming off this little water here. And, uh, you know, originally I kind of thought it was a coon making it, and then I found a lot of mink tracks. And I just thought, what the heck, I'll throw a Hail Mary and try it. So uh, we connected, and pretty, uh, pretty good indoor mink season. Hey everybody, so uh, we're here, uh, our trapping season is kind of winding down, and so one thing that's, you know, we kind of want to do with these videos is show you some of the more peculiar things that we're doing. Um, today, we're going to start the process, this is a months long process, so we're going to be updating the video, you know, as you see it, it's going to be probably, you know, months apart, but uh, we're going to make beaver tail oil. And we're going to show you how we do that. Um, we're going to use that in our bait and our lure, um, you know, as attractant for beaver and also uh, and part of our attractant for coyotes. So I'm going to get started with that and uh, we'll show you what we're doing as we go. We've got a smaller beaver, beaver tail here and we're just going to take and kind of cube it up. I wondered about that. I do have a bone that goes down the middle, so I'm just going to basically score both sides of it. And actually, I know a lot of people, or not a lot of people, I know some people that will actually cut this tail open, skin it out, and fry it like a crackling. I've never tried it. And when I get it scored like that, I'm going to get like a, a heavier butcher block style knife to go ahead and break it. So I'll go grab that and be right back. Alright, so I, all I did was flip the tail over here first before I do anything else. And I'm just going to uh, go over this side where I scored the other side. And we may keep a few tails to try to do some uh, we may try to do some tanning stuff like that with them but uh, the beaver tail oil great attractant for other beaver and we're going to use some of it for our coyotes like I said but so once I've got it scored I'm just going to snap it off here and as you can see it breaks pretty easy till probably I get up in here it's still breaking okay, but uh, somebody wants to talk to me. <laughs> All right, so now then, once you got chunked like that, I don't know if you can. Is that close up? <laughs> Uh, it's basically mostly fat and like a almost like a gelatin here and then once we cube this up we're going to put it in a uh, pickle jar or any kind of glass jar and we'll just let that render off and it's going to make a really good oil that we can use like I said for attractants or or whatever so just something else you can kind of do um, during your trap season you know we're always looking for new things we can do to kind of help improve our line and to try out but you know one thing especially uh, when it comes to you know a renewable natural resource which is what these animals are um, we like to use everything we can. I mean, we're using the meat out of the beaver. The only thing that we're not using on our beavers uh, is the rib cage and backbone, basically. So uh, we're really big on, you know, it's a renewable natural resource. So you should be using every part of it. 
and uh, we don't let anything go to waste really on it so all right we got one of these chunked up I'm gonna chunk the rest of these up and then we'll talk to you about what the next step of the process is so we got all of our beaver tails quartered up and we're putting them in a bucket uh, so basically the next process of this is going to be uh, we're going to render these down in a glass jar um, we're going to freeze these until it warms up in the spring because it's a sun rendering process definitely don't want to do it inside um, just from what little bit I've been in here working with these they're pretty stinky but uh, I'm going to get all these put in a bucket and uh, get them put in a bag we're going to freeze them for the uh, next three or four weeks or so and then this spring we'll get them out get them in a jar and we'll show you how that works So basically the next thing we're working on here uh, is we have to go from this jar looking like this to uh, this is the next phase. I've already kind of done this one. Because we didn't get it all to render the way we wanted to, there's going to be an extra step here. Um, we're going to put this in a strainer over top of a bucket to kind of let all the, all the nasty render uh, just renderings, whatever you want to call it, the, the rot uh, will go into the bucket and the oil will go in and then we'll resettle out. We'll pour it all into this. Uh, one thing we kind of did was use a little bit of water just to wash what was on top of the beaver tail that was uh, remaining. Uh, I will tell you it's very pungent. It's a very pungent odor uh, so you don't want to be doing it too long. You don't want to do it inside your house, anything like that. But uh, So that would be the next thing we do is we go from here pour it in the strainer and we uh, let that kind of all settle out put a little bit of water over top of the sprayer let that kind of settle down take the strainer off with the beaver tails uh, get that in your trash or whatever you're going to do with it and then we'll uh, transfer from that bucket into this jar then this jar as it separates out the next phase will be to We'll move it off the top, kind of a skim process off the top, and that'll be our finished product basically uh, for now in this step, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to that. Some of the stuff we're going to be using, we're going to be using the baster here to actually dip off the oil on the top. Uh, we really don't want to get any of that uh, rendering, uh, any of that material that's at the bottom of this in there. It's really pungent, is a good word for it. Uh, it's just, you don't want that nasty rotten odor uh, involved in the process uh, for multiple reasons you know if you're using it on coyote sets like we're going to do even coyotes don't like that super rotten smell on there and if you're using them on those beaver sets that's a quick way to get a beaver to shy away from it so uh, on these glass jars like we're using it's important to have a way for it to breathe so we use this it's just an old triangle bandage uh, that we didn't use or that we used and couldn't reuse so cut it up and I put that uh, in between the jar lid and the jar it's kind of like a pressure relief uh, for the as that renders it's going to build pressure inside that jar so we want to be able to kind of have somewhere to breathe so that's what that's for uh, the other couple things we have a larger or a, a pickle jar kind of smaller than these but a little larger than the bait canisters um, if, if I end up with quite a bit more oil than uh, what's going to fill these then I'll put it in this but we like to use the smaller containers uh, this is just a small uh, bait container basically that we get from Hoosier Trapper Supply uh, you can get online and order them um, and we'll be able to I'll be able to put these in and if, if I'm by myself 
I have mine, if Scott's by himself, he has his, or if I need to loan some to somebody or whatever, the smaller canisters work for that. Alright, so we're going to take our lid off. As you can see, we've got the used cloth here. Pungent's not even a great word for it, it's pretty raw, pretty rough. I'm going to take this and I'm going to pour it into my strainer. So now that I've got it in this strainer, most of it is uh, already drained. Most of the good stuff is already drained to the bottom. But I'm going to run a little bit of water. I don't want to run a lot of water because I don't want to add to, uh, you know, put too much in there where I have too much in my jar, but I'm going to put a little bit of water over the top of it just to kind of let it, you know, get whatever's on it uh, off of it, and then all I'll be left with is what's left over of the beaver tails, which is basically the outer scaly part, and then some of the inside that didn't render, so uh, on to the next step. Alright, so I've ran a little bit of water um, over the top of it, uh, as you can kind of see the actual scaly part of the beaver tail has kind of fell off and you know, it's no longer being held on and now I'm just kind of stuck with that white cartilage uh, that's kind of on that you know, next layer in. The tail obviously has a little bit of cartilage like bone going through it and then uh, this step, this part right here I'm basically done with so I'm going to take it, get it in a, get it in a trash bag and get it out of here and then uh, take the bucket, transfer it over into our jar, and we'll be on to the next process. All right, so we've got our, uh, all of our tails and the renderings and the oil. The tails are gone, oil and the renderings are here. Uh, we're going to transfer the bucket over to our jar, which is just not really a, not really a great process for what I could get a funnel and I could probably take a little more time to, to make sure that I don't have any spillage, but honestly, we do a pretty good job just like that right there. So the only thing left in the bucket, basically there's a little film of oil and there's a little bit of the tail scales. Um, and now we have our jar full of renderings, water, and beaver tail oil. So we're going to give this some time to set up. The oil will actually rise to the top even on, on top of the water. Uh, that's that's kind of where we're at. So I'm hoping we have enough here to, to get us through the trapping season this year. Uh, we're on to the next phase and I'll show you that. All right, so the next step that I'm working on is dipping the oil off the top and putting it here into my uh, smaller containers. Which I've got two of them done already. Uh, this third one's going to be done here shortly. Uh, so, what am I using beaver tail oil for? Is a question I'm sure I'm going to get. Uh, I'm going to use it basically, mainly, primarily as a coyote lure, uh, just to put on top of my sets. Uh, most of you have probably heard us talk about or or uh, Anybody that knows me knows that all of our bait that we're making, uh, we use beaver meat, castor. Uh, castor is a huge, huge attractant for coyotes. And then obviously uh, putting on a castor mound set for beaver. Uh, we'll probably use it a little bit for that. Those are the two primary things that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there are other uses for it that you know we'll we'll find along the way, but uh, it's kind of a tedious process here at this point, and you know we're just going to keep keep working on it, and hopefully have a finished product shortly. All right, so this is the uh, I'm not going to say final phase or final product of what we're doing, but this is uh, what we were left with. Um, so with this. Uh, the turkey baster actually drew it out a little too quick and we still got a little bit of our renderings or whatever's left over. But from here up is good beaver tail oil. Um, 
I'll take a smaller, like a, uh, a dripper for the smaller one ounce jars. Uh, I'll take that to dip what's left in here off. Uh, with that, I can just dip the top off and go into our smaller containers, or actually I'll probably put some in our drip, uh, smaller dripper jars. Uh, I actually took a little bit out and just to test it out on some beaver sets, uh, made similar to a caster mound set, but not quite, but I used a stick on a slide, put beaver tail oil on that, and uh, the last week of season caught a couple more beaver, just throwing it out there to try it. But uh, this is what it looks like. I'm gonna take and transfer it out of that um, into our smaller, uh, like I said, our smaller jars or canisters and then we'll have a finished product to use for next trapping season. But uh, like I said, we're going to use it primarily on coyote sets and beaver sets and see what happens. But I hope this, uh, this was informative for you and uh, that you'll be able to maybe make something like this to put in another tool in your toolbox on the trap line. I hope to do a little more of this this year, uh, upcoming season four. Hope to do a little more how-to to kind of show you how we're successful and what we use and, and i hope that works out for everybody and i hope it's enjoyable to watch so thanks for watching this week's episode and uh, we look forward to showing you another one next week